Obstruction, retaliation, what does it mean? Are you facing a charge of obstruction or retaliation in Texas? Hi, I'm Jeff Hampton with the Hampton Law Firm. Today I want to talk to you about the crime of obstruction or retaliation. And if you wait around to the end of this video, I'll also give you a free ebook, What to Do If You Have Been Charged With a Crime in Texas. Now, let's jump into this and I wanna talk a little bit about a crime that for many people, they don't even know what it means. Maybe you've heard of the term obstruction. A lot of people think of obstruction of justice or they think of retaliation. They're not exactly sure what all that means. Well, under Texas criminal law, there are instances where if things are said to a police officer or to a witness before or after uh, a possible investigation or crime, you can end up being charged with the crime of obstruction or retaliation. Now, here's the way, the way you should be thinking about this. Usually the way things tend to work out, particularly if it's involving a witness, you will get a phone call from a detective. Now, if you have been contacted by a local detective in your county wanting to talk to you about certain statements you supposedly may have made to someone as a witness that was a witness to a crime or an incident that took place, be very careful. Remember, you have a Sixth Amendment right to counsel and you also have a Fifth Amendment right not to speak to the detective. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, if you, here's what happens. The detective many times will want you to try to, hey, tell me your side of the story. Just tell me what happened. Well, all we're gonna do is get together and I wanna hear what took place on your end. Be very careful. A detective is only meeting with you most of the time they've already established the fact that they believe they have probable cause from a statement from someone else who was at the scene. So they are trained to get with you, interrogate you, and see if they can gather information from you that can be construed in some way to establish probable cause for your arrest. So the moment you hire an attorney, you now have a Sixth Amendment right to which the detective can only speak to your, your attorney, no longer is going to speak to you. And then now, remember, even if you've done nothing wrong, especially when you've done nothing wrong, the temptation is to say, I'm gonna go in, I'm going to talk to the detective and clear my name. Be careful, it doesn't usually work like that. If you, if you go in and talk, even innocent things that you say could possibly be construed or misconstrued, maybe I should say, to seem like statements of, of, of guilt rather than innocence. So when you get an attorney involved, your attorney now can convey that same information to the detective, except now everything your lawyer says is hearsay. It is not able to be used against you in a court of law, and you protect yourself while also possibly exonerating yourself at the same time, okay? So if a detective calls you, be very smart about the situation. Make sure you're working with an attorney to protect your rights so that a detective doesn't misconstrue what you're trying to say. Now, what does it mean to be charged with obstruction or retaliation in Texas? Essentially, the crime of obstruction or retaliation under Texas law is designed to make or to criminalize threats made against judges, police officers, other public servants, um, and sometimes witnesses to a crime. In other words, if you make a threat or if some person makes a threat against a police officer, a judge, other public servant, or if you publicly post, con or publicly post contact information regarding a public servant or their family member, you could be facing the very serious felony charge of obstruction or retaliation. Now, under Texas Penal Code Section 36.06, .06, a person commits the criminal offense of retaliation if he intentionally or knowingly harms or threatens to harm another by an unlawful act, now here we go, in retaliation for or on account of the service or status of another as a public servant, as a witness, prospective witness, or informant, or person who has reported or who the actor knows intends to report the occurrence of a crime or to prevent or delay the service of another as a public servant, witness, prospective witness, or informant. Uh, additionally, a person commits an offense if the person posts a publicly accessible, on a publicly accessible website, the residence address or telephone number of an individual the actor knows is a public servant or a member of a public servant's family or how Household with the intent to harm or threat of harm to the individual or a member of the individual's family. Now, look, it's pretty clear. It's either threats or it's posting something publicly with the intent to harm either the public servant, the witness, or a family member of that public servant. Now, 
the real question that people ask me all the time is, well, is there a difference between obstruction and retaliation? The primary distinction between obstruction and retaliation is when the threat of harm took place. The question we have to ask, did the alleged threat of harm take place before a public servant or witness does something or after it happened? Obstruction, let me just break this down. Obstruction involves a harm a, or threat of harm to a witness or public servant before the crime is actually reported or action is taken. Obstruction is defined, just to give you a definition of it, it's defined as the act of delaying or preventing someone's actions as a witness, informant, whistleblower to a crime or actions as a public servant. So in order to be convicted of the crime of obstruction, it must be proven by the state of Texas beyond a reasonable doubt that you caused harm or threatened harm that was unlawful, okay? So the harm or threatened harm, it can be physical, but it doesn't necessarily have to be physical harm. For example, threats that are made to cause property damage, financial damage, or destruction of character by slander or libel, those can be if sufficient to establish obstruction. However, this is, this is critical. The so-called threats must be proven to have been made, here's the key, to prevent, understand, to prevent the public servant or witness from doing their job or offering their testimony. So you understand, it's used as a threat. If you do this, I'm gonna do that. And so that's the whole point of obstruction. Now this does not happen as much as, you, as, as it used to happen in the past, but you'll still find some examples of people committing the crime of obstruction by threatening a witness in a criminal case that they will experience harm if they choose to testify in trial. Okay, that's one example. You'll also find examples of overbearing parents becoming very upset with a police officer deciding to arrest their child. We have seen instances where a parent will be arrested and charged with, with obstruction when they get very upset at the officer and and threaten that officer or a member of that officer's family if they make the mistake of arresting their child. We've actually seen parents get very upset saying, I can't believe you're doing this to my child or you can't believe you're doing this to my family member and they make this threat out of anger or frustration. Now, the crime of retaliation, we've, we've covered obstruction. The crime of retaliation is related to the act of harm or threat of harm to a witness or public servant after a crime has been reported. So remember, obstruction is before, retaliation is after. Specifically, if the state of Texas can prove beyond a reasonable doubt that you harmed or threatened to harm a public servant or witness for giving testimony, reporting a crime or acting in the scope of the duties of a public servant, you could face a retaliation charge. Here we are looking at a threat because someone reported a crime or they acted upon the duties. It's in the past tense, it's already happened as a public servant, okay? Now look, what is the spirit and purpose of these laws? Why do they even exist? They exist in order to prevent illegal acts that will stand in the way of the criminal justice system functioning properly. That's why the Texas legislature put these in motion. But the most common situation where retaliation charges are filed is when a person who is charged, the arrestee, uh, or the defendant makes a statement to a prospective witness, maybe very frustrated, knowing that they're innocent. They make a statement to a prospective witness or alleged victim in a pending case, and what happens? The witness overreacts, right? The witness has an overreaction to what's said to them, and then as a result of that, they take that statement as an express or an implied threat and reports the statement to the district attorney's office. Now all of a sudden, we've got an obstruction or a retaliation charge. So as you can see, the ability to establish the criminal elements of intent and threat are gonna many times be established by the subjective opinion of the witness that's involved, or here's what's going on, okay? Now, here's the question. Is obstruction or retaliation a felony in Texas? What is the punishment? And the reality of it is, is yes, the criminal offense of retaliation is classified as a felony of the third degree. So it's a third degree felony punishable by a minimum of two up to 10 years in prison and up to a $10,000 fine. Now, I'm not going to, there is one example where it can actually be a second degree felony if the offense was related to a juror or someone acting in the status of their juror, if that's the alleged victim, kind of an obscure 
I've actually never seen that happen, but I guess in theory it could. But that's one of those examples. Now I wanna jump right into this. What are some of the defenses to obstruction or retaliation charges in Texas? Now the first of which would be the lack of criminal intent. Remember, in order to be convicted of obstruction or retaliation, the state of Texas must prove beyond a reasonable doubt that you intentionally or knowingly harmed or threatened to cause harm to a public servant or witness and that that harm was unlawful. Now, what I mean by that, notice the wording intentionally or knowingly. It makes it certain that the harm or threat of harm must have been made specifically, specific intent to the witness or public servant and that you had such intent to do that, all right? Now, what if it was made accidentally? What if it was made mistakenly? What if the mental state was negligent or reckless, but not intentional or knowingly? For example, I'm gonna give you one example. We represented a client on a retaliation charge one time. He was accused of making a threat of harm, and the police officer believed that that threat was made to him, and he became enraged at what he heard this, uh, the arrestee say, our client. Got very upset at him, and so as a result of that, he arrested him, arrested him and charged him based upon that alleged threat. However, upon reviewing the video and the body camera involved in this, it became, became clear, or at least it, there was some good reasonable doubt involved in this, as to whether or not the threat of harm was made to the officer or to actually someone else who was at the scene antagonizing the whole situation. And so, in fact, that other person at the scene was not a witness at all. It was someone else that was there causing problems. And so as a result of that, we were able to use that piece of evidence to establish, hey, there was a threat made, but it was not specifically related to an officer or a witness that was there. And as a result, there was reasonable doubt. That helped us to be able to resolve our client's case. Now, how did we do that? Well, because it's a felony charge, we were able to show that video to a grand jury. And remember, a grand jury for all felony cases in Texas must... The, their whole purpose is to determine, should this case be a felony? Should this case be a lesser charge, like a misdemeanor? Or should we get rid of it altogether? And the way that a grand jury gets rid of a case is by what's called a no bill. And so many, of, many attorneys do not present evidence at a grand jury, and it's a shame because the reality of it is, particularly if you have some evidence establishing reasonable doubt, the grand jury could look at it from a different perspective than the officer or the prosecutor, and they could come back and exonerate, exonerate you or your loved one after they get a chance to hear the other side. Okay. Now, let's talk about threats. Remember, another defense can be that the threat, the alleged threat, cannot be proven. We've learned from the definition that we talked about earlier that the state of Texas must prove beyond a reasonable doubt that the harm was done or a threat of harm was made against a witness or public servant. Well, what if the threat was not a threat at all? What if the statement was a, I mean, look, just made out of full rage and just anger, but yet it was nonspecific? in terms of what was going on. One important point to make is that the harm done or the threat of harm does not require threat of bodily harm. I do wanna be clear about that. Non-physical threats are still sufficient, you know, including property damage and different things like that. But if the alleged threat of harm was more out of frustration, this happens all the time, it was more out of a statement of frustration or, and it lacks specificity or it does not specifically, you know, make a threat of harm or, or damage, then this is important for your criminal defense attorney to be able to use this as a leverage point to be able to show that this so-called threat was not really a threat at all. It was mainly a statement made out of frustration uh, at, a, at a moment of real high intensity when it comes to emotions, okay? So here's the point. You can see that there are multiple aspects to dig into when it comes to a charge like this. And you're not talking about a petty crime. This is a third degree felony charge. So if you, a friend or a loved one, is facing the crime of obstruction or retaliation in the North Texas area, I wanna personally invite you to contact the Hampton Law Firm for a free consultation and case analysis. Analysis. This number you see above me on the screen, uh, that's our contact information. I want to invite you to call that number, ask to speak with me, and be happy to give you a free consultation and analysis. And by the way, I promised you if you waited around to the end of this video, I'd give you a free ebook, What to Do If You've Been Charged with a Crime in Texas. If you'll click the link down below in the YouTube video, I'll be happy to send that over to you. I want to thank you for joining us here today. If you liked what you heard, subscribe to our YouTube channel, like this video. We'll send you more great content just like this. Thanks again for joining us.